A to he. Love you. Alright, so right now we are going to read Sam the Minute Man by Nathaniel Benchley and pitches by Arnold LaBelle. However, before we start, somebody wanted to say something. So she's going to sit here with us and read today. All right. Let's find the first page. See, there's some beautiful artwork in it. Right. See, the boy sitting on a stump in a tree with his dog. About 200 years ago, a boy named Sam Brown lived with his parents on a farm in Lexington, Massachusetts, near Boston. At that time, America was not a country of its own. It belonged to England. The farm was small, and the earth was rocky. Sam and his father did most of the outdoors work together. See? Sam and his father working on the farm. Eventually, that's going to be something you can help me with. Sam's mother worked indoors. Everything they needed, they had to make or grow or cook for themselves. See, you can see his mom sitting there with a spinning wheel, probably making a blanket or a shirt. If you look close in the background, you can see pictures of them working in the farm. Once in Boston, Sam and his father saw soldiers. The British king had sent to keep order. The people were unhappy with the way things were being they were unhappy with the way things were being run. Sometimes they had riots. Some people hid guns and powder in case of trouble with the soldiers. They didn't like the soldiers much. They called them lobster backs because of their red coats. You look, you can see Sam and his father over here staring at the backs of all of the red coats. On their way home, Sam asked, what do these soldiers want? They want to keep us from being too strong, his father said. They are afraid of us. That, that makes us even, said Sam. I'm afraid of them. Okay. Sam and his father riding on horseback. One night in early spring, Sam was awakened by the sound of church bells ringing. What's this, he thought. I can't, it can't be Sunday yet. <laughs> There's Sam standing in his night clothes, staring at the church bell. In the middle of the night. He went to the window. In the darkness, he could see men running. They seemed to come from everywhere. He heard voices of his father and mother. His mother sounded frightened. Sam knew there was trouble. You see a bunch of men running along the hill, running in front of the house, carrying their rifles and powder horn. That little bag they have, that's usually where they keep their shots and the wads for their rifle. He dressed quickly and went downstairs. What's going on? He asked. Go back to bed, his mother said. No, said his father. We need everyone we can get. His father was a minute man, which meant he had to be ready for trouble at a minute's notice. Get your gun, Sam, he said. Uh, why? Asked Sam, what's happening? You can see Sam's father loading his rifle. Now these are old black powder musket rifles. Nothing like the rifles we have today. 
they would take forever to load. But thankfully, by that time, they've actually developed rifling in the barrels, which made them more accurate. Nobody knows for sure, his father said. The British have left Boston and are coming this way. Who told you? asked Sam, hoping it wasn't true. Paul Revere said his father, now get your gun. Sam's father talking to him and his little dog behind him. So Sam got his gun and followed his father through the darkness to the village green. The bells were still ringing and a drum was making a rattling noise. Sam felt cold and afraid. That's them. There's already a large group of men in the center square. And a little drummer boy drumming away. Captain Parker, the head of the Minutemen, told them to line up near the meeting house. Sam saw his friend, John Allen. John looked the way Sam felt, which made Sam feel better. Why are the British coming? Sam asked. They want the guns and powder hidden in the Concord, said John. They have to come past here to get them. There's Sam and John talking while all the adults are getting ready. Slowly, it began to get light. The drums and the bells stopped. It was so quiet. It was so quiet that Sam could hear the birds twittering in the trees. He could smell the apple blossoms and felt the wet dew on the grass. Mm -hmm. Maybe they won't come after all, he said to John. Maybe they'll go away. Maybe, said John, but not likely. <laughs> That's all of them just waiting in the grass, waiting for the redcoats to show. And then it was daylight, and the men began to relax. Some of them even yawned. <laughs> Just like that. Sam's father talked with friends. Sam and John played games with the knife in the grass. Sam wished he had eaten breakfast. Suddenly, John said, Shh, listen. There's Sam and John standing on the hill. They listened. They listened, and in the distance, they could hear the sound of marching feet. Tramp, 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 tramp. And then, see, long dirt road with stone walls along the side, and all of the Minutemen hiding behind it. Over the hill and past the taverns came the soldiers. They came on and on and on. Sam could see their red coats and the sun glistening on their bayonets. They looked like a bright river of red. All of the red coats with the red coats commander. And here they are, marching away with the people hiding along. As they came closer, Captain Parker tried to count them. There seemed to be a thousand. And he had only 80 minute men. There are too many of them, he said. We had better move away. I'm all for that, said Sam. I think I'll get on home. Me too, said John. There's nothing I can do here. Sam and John and their fathers and the other men began to move off. 
I'll see you after breakfast, Sam said to John. Then he saw a British officer who was shouting and waving his sword. I wonder what he wants, Sam said. He told us to disperse, said John. I'm dispersing as fast as I can. He doesn't need to shout. See, there's their commander on the horseback waving around his saber. Then, someone, somewhere, fired a gun. Bang! The troops began to shoot. Minutemen fell all around. Sam! John cried, I'm hit! John held his leg and fell down. See, all of them firing. The British officer made his troops stop shooting and got them back in line. He marched them off towards Concord, leaving eight dead Minutemen. Off they go marching with dead in the field. <laughs> Sam and his father helped John's father take him home. Sam felt he was having a bad dream. He saw John's mother crying as she put a bandage on his leg. How does it feel, Sam? asked. Not that good, said John. I mean, obviously not surprising. But there's John getting his leg wrapped up by his mom. When Sam and his father got to their house, all Sam's fear changed to anger. How did they dare do that? He cried, if they come back, I'll shoot them, everyone. Be quiet, his father said, washing the grit and powder off his face. You may just have that chance. He will not, said his mother. He doesn't leave this house again. See, Sam's father washing his face. Sam's mother saying he can't go. She looks angry. She's probably angry and scared. And then the bells began to ring again. The troops were coming back. Sam, you stay here, said his mother. But Sam had already grabbed his gun and ran outside, his father following close behind. See, there's Sam leading the charge. Mm -hmm. Yep. By now, more farmers had come from all around. They were shooting at the soldiers as they marched. They never got in close, but fired from behind the rocks and trees. This worked better than meeting in the open. You see, all the men, men taking cover versus the British who are marching in formation up here. Yeah. And then, more British troops came out from Boston. For a while, the battle was quite heavy. The British troops burned some houses, but their hearts weren't really in it. See, if you look at the battlefield, you'll see farmhouses burning next to all the British troops. All the redcoats are firing. The Minutemen are taking cover. <coughs> if you'll notice, one of the things back then... Mm -hmm. It was common tactics for the British military to all stand in rows and rows of line. They would, the first row would shoot their rifles and then they would bend down and start reloading. When they bent down, the soldiers behind them would then shoot. They would all fire in volleys, taking turns. That way, while one was shooting, another was reloading. Now, it was a pretty good strategy if you're fighting everyone out in the open. But the Americans at the time, the co colonials, they knew they didn't stand a chance fighting the British in open war. So instead, they used what's called guerrilla tactics. They, they fought smart. They would hide behind trees, shoot and move, hide behind stuff, ambushes. 
And that's how the American Minutemen use their tactics from hunting and stuff like that all the time. So they knew the land better than the British. Mm. All right, so the British troops weren't really into the war. Soon, they headed back to Boston followed on all sides by the farmers, whose bullets buzzed around like bees. The British are running, along with the Minutemen slowly ambushing them as they try to run away. Late that night, Sam and his father got back home, and the rain was falling gently. Where have you been? Sam's mother said. I've been worried sick about you. In this picture, you see them coming home with Sam's father's arm around his son, his mother waiting with the dog yapping. Mark, mark, my part. Okay. Well, as okay as one can be after a battle. Sam was too tired to answer. All he wanted to do now was sleep. No one knew it then, but that day was the start of the American Revolution. The war lasted eight years, and at the end, America was a country on its own. But Sam didn't think of that. He thought of John and wondered how he was doing. See if you look. Sam is going up the stairs with his dog, and down in the corner, behind the stairwell, you see Sam's mother and father. Okay. Mm hmm. Alright, so, Sam went up the stairs, right? And then. He slept. The end. That's the end of the book. Yay, Daddy. Do you have any questions? No. All right, Dahi. We love you. We miss you. Mm -hmm. Say good night. Good night, Dahi. Love you.